Hello everybody. Today we will be looking at a different approach towards solving the various network flow problems that we covered in the last few classes. So this new approach is called linear programming or integer programming and it works by looking at different re linear relationships between variables of a mathematical model and from those linear relationships it then chooses the best possible outcome. So basically it is an optimization method. In context of the network flow problems, you may recall that the total flow is constructed on the basis of accumulating flows across various augmented paths. So supposing that these are all our augmented paths, what we do is that we basically sum the flow across each of these augmented paths in order to get the total flow in the network. Now the selection of these augmented paths in a particular order may provide us the maximum possible total flow. So if you want to ensure that this flow total is maximum that is really dependent upon the order in which you are doing all this summation. So the algorithms that are used to find this maximum flow are the Fort Fulkerson family of algorithms and so on and so forth. Now if we pay a look at this equation and we somehow visualize this on the basis of a plot where on the x-axis we take into account the different augmented paths and since this is a summation operation we could basically have an accumulative flow okay we can call it as the total flow so as we keep finding new paths we may obtain a monotonically increasing flow so it could be linearly increasing or it could be increasing in in certain steps but it will always be increasing until a point comes where from that point onwards the flow is at a maximum value. So in this case we can say that the flow is at max. And no matter how many paths you have, it, this flow quantity does not increase. So the concept which you can see over here is that it is linearly increasing. And you may also recall that the network in itself also satisfies certain properties. So for example we have the flow conservation property which basically says that for any vertex i the total incoming flow should be equal to the total outgoing flow. In other words we can say that the total flow on i that is going inwards where i belongs to all of the weights which are moving from j to i. So we can set this to plus. And this subtracted from the total flow on i which is going outwards that is from i to k this set should really be equal to 0. Likewise we also identify certain constraints. So for example we always say that the flow across a given edge mu is less than equal to the maximum capacity across that edge. So we are considering that the flow is always positive or at least zero. From this we can clearly see that basically the maximum flow problem is basically satisfying the concept of an objective function. So we can optimize it and that is where linear programming can help us. So in order to understand how linear programming works, we can look at an intuitive example. So suppose we have the following expressions. And we know that in both of the cases, x is greater than or equal to 0 and y is also greater than or equal to 0. So if we want to graph this, we can basically rearrange these equations such that 1 
can be written as 4y is less than or equal to 220 minus 2x and 2 can be rewritten as 2y is less than or equal to 150 minus 3x. So if we continue to solve this further, we can bring the 4 from the left hand side to the right hand side in equation 1 and the 2 from the left hand side to the right hand side in equation 2 and this implies that y is now less than equal to 55 so 2 over 4 can be simplified into just simply 0.5 and we can call this as 3 and likewise for the second case since we are now dividing by 2 we can have y is less than or equal to 150 divided by 2 is 75 minus 3 by 2 which turns out to be 1.5 x we can call this as 4 now both of these two are linear equations and we can plot it and since we know already that both x and y are greater than or equal to 0 we can only require two points on x in order to find out what these linear lines will look like so let's suppose we take the case of x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 10 so we, if we plug in these values from 3 we can obtain that the y value is less than or equal to 55 considering that plugging in x is equal to 0 will only give us 55 and likewise from 4 we can get y as less than or equal to 75 and likewise if we plug in the values of x is equal to 10 over here from 3 we, to, we could imply that y is basically less than and equal to 55 minus 0 0.5 into 10 5 which turns out to be 50 and in the case of 4 we can get y is less than or equal to 75 minus 1.5 into 10 we can get 15 which is equivalent to 60. So let's see the plot in action. What we will be needing is to extend y from 75 down to 70, 65, 60 and for the x we can basically mark x is equal to 0, 5, 10, 15, 20 and so on and so forth. So let's plug in the abscissa lines and now we can also plug in these values. So in the first case for x is equal to 0 the first equation is giving us y is equal to 55, y is less than equal to 55. We can mark this in blue and place a dot at this point. Likewise in the case of the first second line we can place a dot corresponding to this location and for x is equal to 10 we can place a dot at 50 which is this point and in the second case we can place a dot for 60 for x is equal to 10 and subtending these points to a line we see this representation and the second one basically becomes this point like this so we can perhaps see that this is 25 30 35 40 and maybe 45 or 46 80 85 90 95 and a little short of 100 now play at pay attention to the two equations the first equation is basically saying that the solution is really somewhere along the space and in the second case the equation is basically telling us that the solution is really anywhere under the line in this region so from this I can identify my feasible region to include this part of the overlapping between both of the lines to include this part not this part and not this part so zooming in we can identify the bounds across this feasible region 
So in this case we have C1 at 0 and 55. This point is given as C2 at 20 and 45. This point C3 is at maybe close to 50 and 0 and the, this point over here is really C4 at 0, 0. So from this we have identified all of the extremal points of that feasible region and now given any objective function suppose that objective function of x and y is saying that we want to find out the maximum of x plus y then that would imply that plugging in all the values from c1 we will be getting x plus y as 55 from c2 we will be getting this as 65 from C3 we will be getting 50 and from C4 we will be getting 0. So clearly this is the winner which satisfies the maximum possible values. If we take that the objective function f of x of y is equal to the maximum of 3x plus y, well we can plug in the values C1 is going to give us as 55 considering that x is equal to 0. C2 is going to give us 20 into 360 plus 45, 105. C3 is going to give us 150. And C4 is going to give us a 0. So in this case, the answer is going to be C3 as 150. And all of these answers are actually coming from this feasible region. And when we look at it from the perspective of the objective functions, we can refer to the corresponding maximum answer. So in the perspective of linear programming, we will always refer to this point as finding the maximum of an objective function such as x plus y subject to the conditions 2x plus 4y is less than or equal to 20 and 3x plus 2y is less than or equal to 150 and given the constraints x is greater than or equal to 0 and y is greater than or equal to 0. So this is my linear program. So let's see this so let's see this now in the context of our network flow. So you may recall that in one of the previous lectures we had a graph representation like this and a few moments ago I referred to you the point that we have a flow conservation property of this form and some constraints of this form so we can bring this down just for reference and from this we can formulate our linear program so remember that our linear program is going to be a maximization of an objective function subject to the given conditions and these constraints. Now if we analyze this part, we really what we really want to say that from S we want the maximum possible flow to the direction of t and this is only possible if the edges if the flow across the edges s v1 and s v2 are at its maximum the other edges are meaningless we could also take the case of the same case that we want the v3 to t and the v4 to 8 as maximum as that would imply the same thing. So in this case what we can do is that we can plug in the objective function simply as SV1 plus SV2. We want to maximize this. And what are the, what are the conditions? 
the conditions are actually coming from this part such that we have to visit each vertex and specify that the total incoming flow into that vertex is equal to the outgoing flow for that vertex. So as an example if we take the first case of V1 we are basically saying that the incoming flow given as S to V1 plus V2 to V1 minus the outgoing flow given as V1 to V3 this is equal to 0. Coming to the case of V2 we are basically saying that the incoming flow of S to V2 minus the outgoing flow of V2 V1 and V2 V4 that is equal to 0. Taking the case of the third vertex we can say that the incoming flow V1 to V3 plus V4 V3 minus V3 T that is equal to 0. And taking the case of the fourth vertex, basically we are saying that the incoming flow of V2 to V4 minus the outgoing flow of V4 to V3 and V4 T that should be equal to 0. Now you can plug in other conditions also just by looking at the graph. For example, we could say that S V1 plus S V2 that should be greater than equal to 0 or for that matter we can specify that V3 T plus V4 T that should also be greater than equal to 0. So we can find out new conditions specifically to adjust the answer a little bit but these are not necessary. Now as far as the constraints are concerned, the constraints are actually specified by these expressions and we have to plug this in for each edge of the graph. So as a result we are left with the constraint of S V1 is greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 32. So this basically represents the flow constraints. And in a similar manner we can construct the others. We can specify 0 less than or equal to S V2 less than or equal to 26. We can specify 0 less than or equal to V2 V1 as 8. For V1 V3 we can specify it in this way. Moving it, moving it downwards, we can specify V2, V1 as less than 8. V2, V4 as less than 28. V4, V3 as less than 14. V3 T as less than 40 and V4 T as less than equal to 8. So we can plug in all of these values into these set of constraints. Now when we say that this is a linear program we really mean that we can plug this into some code format and solve it using some algorithm. So this code format can be basically plugged into tools like the GLPK, GNU Linear Programming Kit and we can also use Python libraries called LPSolve. So let's see that in action. So we can plug in all the LP code into a text file. Let's call it as vim maxflow.txt 
and we simply want to maximize this objective function of SV1 plus SV2 when the interpreter reads this code it will treat the SV1 and SV2 as variables what should be the starting values well we are going to specify constraints for that shortly and of course we can provide the conditions as SV1 plus V2 V1 minus V1 V3 equal to 0 SV2 minus V2 V1 minus V2 V4 is equal to 0 V1 V3 plus V4 V3 minus V3T is equal to 0 and V2 V4 minus V4 V3 minus V4T is equal to 0 we can also plug in the extra conditions SV1 plus SV2 is greater than or equal to 0 and V3T plus V4T is greater than or equal to 0 coming to the constraints we can write them in this manner so 0 less than or equal to SV1 is less than or equal to 32 and we can continue for the other edges 0 SV2 less than or equal to 26 0 less than or equal to V2 V1 less than or equal to 8 0 less than or equal to V1 V3 less than or equal to 24 Okay, we are almost there, V2, V1 less than or equal to 8, 0 less than or equal to V2, V1 less than, okay, this is done, sorry. So we can go to V2, V4 less than or equal to 28, 0 less than or equal to V4, V3 less than or equal to 14, 0 less than or equal to V3, T. And finally, we have V4, T is less than or equal to 8. Let's save the code and in order to run this code we can refer to the LP solve LP solve utility and specify it the location of this text file and let's see the output so what it is saying to us is that the maximum objective function which we obtained is the value of 46 and the actual values of the variables representing the maximum flow are given in the lines below. Now if you recall from our previous lecture where we manually solved this problem we can see that we obtained the value of 46 as an answer which is also given to us by this code over here. And if you really look at the state of the variables so in this case if we take the case of 8 and the starting point as 32 we can really see that if the remaining capacity is 8 it's really because a quantity of 24 flow has moved across it likewise if we take the case of 4 we can basically say that from the maximum capacity of 26 of quantity of 22 flow has moved across S to V2 as a result the remaining forward flow capacity is given as 4 over here and if you look at the actual values of the variables in the linear program we can see that it is reflecting to us the values of 24 and 22 just as we have the representation over here now the code variation may be slightly different for GLPK I have prepared a code in advance so that we can just have a look at it and avoid all of the typing. So let's go to the directory and check out this code maxflow.lp. And if you look at the notation, really we can see some parallels. So in this case the maximization of the objective function, of course the variable names are a little bit different but they imply the same meaning. So in this case we are trying to maximize this function which is the same as this over here subject to the condition first given as this expression the second condition third fourth and fifth and so on and so forth can be compared in a similar way to these expressions and the constraints are specified over here in the end which are the same constraints which we specify over here. So you can notice that the 
representation of the variables is slightly different and we can find means to generate this automatically and to run the code let's go to the terminal or rather we can create a new terminal and see it over here and go to the directory where the glpk compatible code is located the code is in the format c flex so we can ask the glp solution passing it the variable cpxlp to signify the format of the code we can specify the location of the file and we can ask it that the output can be written to this code called to this output file called maxdo.out now it does its job and after some outputs showing that it was able to read the file and obtain an optimal LP solution the basic solution is then written to maxflow.out so we can have a look at that output file okay we can slightly increase the screen size or maybe I can refer to it in an editor okay we definitely need to increase the screen size so you can see over here that it was able to find the objective function of 46 as the maximum value and in addition it is also able to return to us the status of the conditions and the flow capacity across each edge and a check on some optima optimality conditions. So this can really be plugged into a C based API GLPK and can be used to obtain possibly optimal solutions using the linear programming approach for various types of directed graphs.